one of the reasons that made me, you know, decide to really like go out on my own and really, you know, jumpstart the whole shoe brand was that I just felt that if I didn't try something on my own, that I know like I'm that personality that I just would never truly be happy thinking like, what if? Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I, you know, go out and, you know, it doesn't work, then at least I know that I tried my best and I can always, and I can go back to having like the day job and go back to doing PR and just know like I tried. And at least like I can feel like that's, you know, that's something that I can hold on to. Hey family, I'm Salone and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Salome, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> you are my very first celebrity guest. <laughs> and you are the first person to ever call me a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so crazy because you are totally a celebrity. Anybody that walks the red carpets at the enemy at the Emmys. <laughs> I was a celebrity, but thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So I just want to start off the conversation by talking about how I come to know you. Mm -hmm. And because I start off every conversation that way. And for you, I heard you on Inside Her Story with Jackie Reed on a Tom Jordan Morning Show. And I was just like, oh my God, like I need to get her on my show. I was like, I'm going I'm to reach out to her and see if she will be willing to come and just tell her story on living her truth because I listened to you on Jackie Reed and then I also ran across some podcast interviews where I was able to get a little bit more of your story. So when I heard your story, I was just like, oh my gosh, she'll be perfect for living her truth because she is literally living her truth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to get into this conversation on on today. And so on Inside Her Story, let's just go ahead and just get right to the point. Because the reason why he was on Inside Her Story is because of Beyonce. Yeah. Right? Beyonce (laughs) ended up wearing your shoe. So Mm -hmm. please talk to us. Tell us what was going on through your mind when you saw her wearing your shoes. Like, how did that even happen? How did your shoes even end up on Beyonce? I was totally in disbelief. Like, even, like, later on after, like, hours had, like, had gone past, I still was thinking, like, oh, no, those weren't my shoes. Like, I've made a mistake. Like, it's, like, this isn't real. Even though, like, I knew for a fact that they were my shoes, it was still definitely, like, like unbelievable in a lot of ways (laughs) having it on like such a public platform was just like so so incredible yeah that was awesome and I and the sad part is is that you wasn't even recognized because I guess her everything she wore that particular day her whole outfit all the designers were pointed out except for you so some of the um like the major media outlets like had left me out a lot of them picked me up and a lot of like the journalists or editors I emailed and they would edit and be like oh so sorry we missed you you're on our radar now but there was like a few still like to this day that were you know the, like those are the outlets that you want to have your name and have be have the mentions and that um did not like recognize the shoes at all so yeah it was definitely disappointing Mm, mm. well you're handling it with grace so (laughs) everything that's supposed to come is definitely going to come even if they don't recognize you which is which is sad we could probably talk about the reason why in a whole nother in a whole nother conversation right right (laughs) so but let's let's take it back to the beginning like what was your what was the pivoting point in your life and in your career? Because you started off in PR. Like, how did you go from PR to luxury shoe designer? Like, talk to us about that. Uh, So I had, like, I have always really admired style and fashion. I've always, always loved shoes. Um, So no matter what I was doing, I tried to keep, like, a part-time job where I could, you know, get the shoe discount (laughs) Um, because I've always been a fan. And so um, I was working in PR and just really, and also part-time at a shoe store where that's actually where I ended up getting the idea for the brand. But 
one of the reasons that made me, you know, decide to really like go out on my own and really, you know, jumpstart the whole shoe brand was that I just felt that if I didn't try something on my own, that I know like I'm that personality that I just would never truly be happy thinking like, what if? Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I, you know, go out and, you know, it doesn't work, then at least I know that I tried my best and I can always, and I could go back to having like the day job and go back to doing PR and just know like I tried. And at least like, I can feel like that's, you know, that's something that I can hold on to. But if I just sat here every day and never tried to be my own boss, I know I would like punch myself and I would totally live to regret it. Like I already kind of was getting that sense of like, I feel like, you know, that voice inside of you that feels like you should be doing something different, but it wasn't listening to it and was really kind of in a dark place because of it. So did, was there any other things that you tried out before? Because like you said, there was there was a voice that's telling you that you needed to do something else. Because I'm wow. just like you. I, I don't like to to say woulda, shoulda, coulda. And I made a, a promise to myself a long time ago that I would never say those words. So anything right. that I even remotely think I'm interested in, I will at least try it out to see and make an official determination on whether or not that was something that I liked and wanted to do. No, that didn't work out for me. Like I wanted yeah. to have a definite answer so I could definitely relate to that. So was there any, anything else that you tried before the luxury uh, shoe when you had that? Well, when I first started the company, I actually didn't believe that I started the business model with the idea of having the color inclusive nude heels, but I didn't realize that I was going to be, you know, positioned in the market at the, like an affordable luxury um, positioning. And so I thought that I was just going to be creating a product that would be this fashion utility for black women, but women on all sides of the skin tone spectrum. I ended up, you know, making a luxury shoe because these were the options that were available to me. I had tried to do like smaller factories that just, and you know, more affordable pathways that just would not listen to me. They wouldn't respond to my emails or they would not, you know, even um, look at my tech, my technical pack drawings and packages to create the prototypes. So I was just like really hitting a lot of dead ends. Um, so like I tried many different avenues and it was, the factory that I landed on that was like, these were the quality shoes that they were making. Um, in addition, I did not want to create my shoes in a place where like, you know, God willing, I scale that there's now going to be questionable work, you know, ethical um, issues, especially because I felt like here I am creating this fashion utility, a shoe that you can wear with anything geared towards women of color. Um, and selling that to them on one side of the business, you know, spectrum. And then on the other side, I have women who could potentially be, you know, making slave wages um, on the other end. It just, it doesn't align with what I was trying to do. Like the whole reason that this brand never really existed previously is because women's voices, black women's, women of color voices were not being heard in the fashion industry. Mm. So I had tried like many different ways and this is where I, you know, I ended up, these were the, the factories that finally would listen to me. Um, so like I, you know, I, it was just a kind of like a really, I just knew I was like, this is an idea that has to exist. And if it's not, if it's not out there, then I'm going to continue to like try and try and try. So I was kind of, I mean, it was years and years of working on it before, um, I got prototypes and then I got many, many horrible prototypes before I found the factory, um, that, you know, opened their doors to me. But yeah. So yeah, I've tried many different things before becoming, uh, I mean, I guess many different paths within this industry before becoming a luxury uh, shoe designer. Yeah. I love that. I love that. But, you know, with me, I, I love shoes too. I don't, I don't think I've ever met a woman who just didn't love shoes. I love right. shoes too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, way back when I thought about it, I was, I thought about it at one time before to uh, maybe start my own shoe line, but it, the idea never went anywhere. It just kind of, Float it through my mind. Right. So, what was your first step when you decided this is what you wanted to do? Like, how how did you even like? Yeah, what was your first step? The first step was downloading a business plan. Like, mm -hmm. I had never even completed a business plan. Like, I took um, I think like two business courses in college, and at no point did we, you know, do like a, a full you know business plan. So, I did not even know how to do it, and so I downloaded like a template online and just literally started filling in the blanks. That was like step one. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. I love that you just went on here and just and just made an effort and put forth the effort and just started right where you are and was okay with using a template. Because I think a lot of us, we have these ideas and it flows in 
you know, in through one ear and out the other, and we never even take the first, the first step. So the fact that you was able to acknowledge that, you know what, I've never even done a business plan before. Let me start there. Yeah. You know, well, I love when that. You're, I mean, I'm sure, you know, when you're, you know, trying to start your own company or be an entrepreneur there, you don't know a lot of things. <laughs> like you may, if you have, you know, a specialty in one of the things that you takes to be an entrepreneur, then you're probably better than most people. Cause like every day, all you're doing is trying to answer questions <laughs> that, that arise through having a business. So you really do have to just be, you know, yeah, just like figure it out. And I definitely, that happens to me all the time. I'm constantly, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find like an online class to, you know, learn how to design, you know, um, to sketch or to do whatever the question is of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, in one of your previous um, interviews that I've listened to, you mentioned that it took about six years of trial yeah. and error, you know, before bringing your shoe to, to market. How did you stay mentally focused and determined during that, during that lifetime? I mean, during that time frame, because I know for me every day, like even this week was a hard week you know, as it relates to <laughs> my business to the point where I'm just like, Lord, can I catch a break? Like, right. how did you stay mentally focused and determined and did self-awareness play a part in that at all? Um, I think when it wasn't self-awareness and I felt like I, my ideas weren't valid, I have a partner, my boyfriend, who has always believed in me. And so he's always been like a super strong um, supporter of my ideas and my creativity. Um, but in addition to that, like it's, you know, you, it's not like to say, I wasn't working on it full time for the full, you know, six and a half, seven years. I was definitely doing other things. I had a, at one point I was like working at a juice, like a press juice store. <laughs> at one point, you know, I was doing, um, like, uh, I was uh, helping my um, my boyfriend do work for some of his projects and consulting through his company. You know, I had lots of, you know, part-time jobs and full-time jobs throughout that process. So um, there's definitely this, this gigging that goes along with it. And then also having um, like mentors and people that you can bounce ideas off of. And not assuming that, especially at the beginning, a lot of times the people that for me, the people that I would bounce ideas off of weren't like titans in like the shoe industry because the shoe industry wasn't going to like let me in. I couldn't even like get a factory to answer my emails. So it's just people who, you know, have been entrepreneurial before that you talk to and like kind of to just understand like the hustle and like the, all the no's that you hear so much of and kind of building resilience to that. Yeah, thank you for thank you for sharing that and being so transparent and just letting people know that while you was busy building your luxury shoe business, that you were still doing other things. Because oh. I feel like in this entrepreneurial space, I feel like for me personally, I can't speak for everyone, but I feel like I've been, you know, told the message of if you're not doing it full time, you're not an official business owner, you're not an official entrepreneur, but you have entrepreneurs out there who are doing it full time and they're struggling mm -hmm. because, you know, it, it takes a while for, you know, for you to turn a profit in your business, depending on what the business is. Oh, yes, we have yeah. some overnight successes, if you will, but that's not everybody's story. Well huge companies that have not turned a profit yet. So that's for sure not a, <laughs> that shouldn't be a barometer for your success <laughs> at all. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many there. Yeah. It's, and also being full time, that all does not, it's not a barometer for success in who you are. I think one of the things that took me a long time to come to terms to saying like that I'm a designer or saying that I'm an entrepreneur. One of the first things that a, um, a mentor told me was like, tell people what you're doing, tell people that you make shoes, put it on your LinkedIn. And I didn't listen. I didn't do it for years and years and years because I was like, I don't like, I have barely have a URL. Like I don't have, I barely have prototypes. They all fall apart. Like they look like garbage. And like, why would I tell people that I'm like this business if it's barely a business? Um, and so I, it's one thing that I kind of, I regret. I wish I had have started, you know, kind of owning up to who you are sooner. And I would, I would suggest to anyone who is doing it, regardless if you're doing it full time or part time or quarter time to whatever you want to do, that's who you are. That sounds like imposter syndrome, don't you think? You know, because right, totally. <laughs> you know, I mean, because every business starts somewhere. So no, you're mm -hmm. not going to hit it out the park. You know, initially, you know, so we like we have to be perfect, like immediately. We have to fill all the boxes before we even apply for the job, and it's just not reality. <laughs> it's just it's just not reality, and it's 
so crazy because I was listening to someone recently um, who said that, you know, because she a, she's a black woman mm-hmm. and she was just like you know sometimes she just has to approach things as if she's a white man right because white men they don't care that they're not qualified they yeah. can have like 20 specifications on the list they only you know qualify for two of them and they're gonna apply for it and be confident in it 100 yeah. percent. and sometimes we as black women we just don't do that yeah i love that quote it's like everyone everyone should carry themselves with the same amount of confidence as a mediocre white man <laughs> That's like, I, when I see that online, I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Because they, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to keep going. And another reason why I really wanted you to, to talk about that is because I always bring up James Dyson as well. I, I'm going to always bring up James Dyson because he had 5,127 failed prototypes of the Dyson vacuum cleaner. Mm-hmm. 5,127 failed prototypes. Like, if people, when I say that, people be like, dang, you sure don't know that number. Because who, who would have got to 5,127? I probably would have stopped at the 10. Right. And would have been like, you know what, God, maybe this is not for me. Right. <laughs> maybe this is really not my purpose. You yeah. know? So, I mean, we, we just have to, it's, it's mindset. I feel like it's mind over matter. It really 100%, is. 100%. So you have to chase your purpose no matter what, because you're going to go through, you know, you're going to have those rejections, you know, like you said, like the factories won't even work with you. You can even get them to respond to an email. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like that sometimes. And it's funny that you say that because even this week, I couldn't even, I, can't, I still can't get somebody to respond to an email. I was just venting to a friend literally a few hours before we started recording. I was venting to a friend. I'm just like, why won't they just respond to my email? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing too, is you can't, you also have to like, with building the resilience, you have to learn to not take things so personally. Yeah. Like, you don't know what that person's going through. Maybe they're a horrible emailer. I mean, like in a lot of ways, we all are. Like no one really loves responding to emails. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's, you know, yeah, it just happens. And I, I, and we've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. There's someone someone right now that I've been like emailing and I talked to their assistant and they're like, oh, great, let's work together. And then I don't hear anything from them. And then I actually ran into them at an event a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, hey, blah, 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 blah. And I like, did I feel, she's like, oh yeah, great. And we exchanged texts and I'm like, game on. Like now I've been texting you and she's still not responding. (laughs) What can you do? (laughs) I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. So now I can, (laughs) who's it's okay because even the celebrities emails don't get returned because <laughs> you're totally a celebrity <laughs> so okay so i don't want our community to get caught up in the fact that you're this bomb luxury shoe designer you know because your brand does have a purpose you know and there's an element of service that's embedded that goes beyond you know making this luxury shoe for women of color and i just think that is just so amazing can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so I mentioned it a little bit earlier that it just I just want to be mindful of having like inclusive voices and the decision makings of the business because again we like the whole idea of like the definition of nude like that very limited definition exists because basically white men were making those decisions like I mean cosmetics just caught up undergarments just caught up and like here we are with shoes like the whole idea that nude was given this specific color makes no sense and no woman of color would have ever decided on this and it's really interesting too because like you said to you know women love shoes and black women love shoes so like why aren't we um you know are why aren't our voices being represented in such an industry Mm -hmm. so you know with that said i it's something that i'm mindful of throughout when i'm using looking to partner with companies when i'm looking to partner with um with you might different, you know, graphic design artists with the shoe box company, with the women that make the dust bags, like all of that. Mm -hmm. All women, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I love that because that's a way to empower women all across the world. And Mm -hmm. I just think that's just so amazing because something as simple as designing shoes can be something used for a greater good and for a greater purpose, you know, that goes beyond just applying, you know, having a shoe for somebody, but just empowering women and giving back, you know, to communities and things of that nature. Cause right. I think sometimes, you know, we overlook our purpose. You know, I, 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 
I'm starting to not like it when people say you need to find your purpose. Because my thing is, you don't have to find it. You need to embrace it. You know what it is. It's right in front of you. You know, life, you know, um, tends to happen and cloud our view. And we, you know, we, we don't see it, right? And we just, our purpose is just so simple that we overlook it. And it's just the small things that we're good at that can really do and make a huge impact in the world. And we just shying away from it you know because it's not as fancy as Beyonce wearing our shoe <laughs> <laughs> so we talk a lot about embracing you know embracing your purpose and um tell us what let's go back to your childhood is there something in your childhood that you that you've done any type of you know talent or skill that you had as a child right that's coming into fruition now with what it is that you do because like i said before you know purpose is not, is not something that we have to find we know what it is we're born with it so we're naturally born with different skills and talents right uh, that we need to cultivate and to master in order to truly walk into our purpose mm -hmm. is there anything from your childhood that you can think of that has come full circle with the work that you're doing today yeah I mean I've always been a particularly creative child um I always I mean beyond just you know enjoying like our class and like all of the projects that we got to do growing up um my mother was really good about allowing me to be creative like even within our home so you know we <laughs> She, God bless her. She would let me like literally paint murals in like our basement wall. <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> and she would not like, you know, she wasn't like necessarily going out and like buying me all these like expensive art, you know, tools, but like with whatever we had, like it was, you know, a few paintbrushes from when she like painted her bathroom in her room and then like whatever colors were left over. So I would just kind of like tape these kind of like abstract murals. Um, and then also I like I did one in her um, garage as well but so there's just <laughs> definitely having like my I was always trying to find a, like, a creative outlet and, and um, when I was in high school that led me to like working on yearbook and things like that but yeah <laughs> I love that I love that because yeah my mom would not have let me write anything on the wall I know like, oh. I, especially now knowing like what it takes to be a homeowner it's like wow <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> that is me just like don't even yeah. look don't even yeah. look at the walls <laughs> um i was just telling my son the other day like not to draw he would take his cars across our walls and like just moved i'm like uh. <laughs> <laughs> my cars are for the ground <laughs> But shout out to your mom for recognizing yeah. that you had, you know, a, 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 an interest or a talent or a skill and letting you explore it. Because oh. I think a lot, I'm not a mom yet, but I just feel like some moms tend to live vicariously through their children, right? Instead of just really just letting them express themselves mm -hmm. in whatever way and however that comes out, supporting, supporting that. So shout out to your mom for for doing that and I'm pretty sure you're yeah. gonna do the same for your son right yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> I love that I love that can you give us one um audible book or regular book that has that you have read that has impacted your life on some level mm. um like the first one that comes to mind is the tipping point by uh, Malcolm Gladwell and it kind of talks about like you know the differences like what we were saying with like the um the dyson creator like what makes somebody successful versus what doesn't and how a lot of it is just spending time so it kind of it takes kind of like that that the um i guess the the lottery factor out of it of it just if you like you know kind of just being born into you know the royal family or whatever and it kind of just nails it down to the fact like these people spent a lot of time you know in their particular industry and it because of that they were successful so like in the the um example that you brought up it would be like the fact that he spent x amount of hours doing all of these different patents and that's why that was like the game change between him and you know whoever the guy who was doing the patents that was next to him that stopped at x amount of patents Mm, I love that. I'm have to I'm gonna have to check that book out. That reminds me of a book that I'm currently listening to. It's called So Good They Can't Ignore You. Mm. I'm listening to that. I'm listening to that book on Audible. And it's pretty much talking about the, the pretty much the same concept. Yeah. Because his thing is he wants to demystify, you know, passion. 
mm-hmm. right? That you should work according to your to your passion because passion, and from his words, don't necessarily lead to purpose or lead to the career that you need to be working for the rest of your life. It's right. all about you know working hard in the industry and mastering you know your skills and the talents and like naturally progressing to whatever that next thing is, you know. So just going out and actually. Um, working and building and going from there because passion fades after after a while and when people just focus on passion it takes away from the focus on drive and hard work Mm -hmm. and learning what it is that they need to learn in order to progress in whatever field that they're working on so that book sounds a lot similar i'm gonna have to check that one out yeah that's a good book i'm gonna check that one out so last question, when describing the meaning of living your truth, what is your third word when you hear these two words I'm going to give to you? So tell me what your third word is. So the words are self-awareness, purpose, and self-determination. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. Because you have to be de- determined. Right. And that's kind and of like... Purpose. When you don't feel like the spark or the excitement behind an issue, it's just kind of like the fact that you just made the effort habit. Mm. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you so much yeah, for talking you. to me on today. You are amazing. <laughs> Thanks. And I don't care what you say. You're the first of many celebrities I'm going to have on this podcast. You know, I'm going to claim it. I always say, um, I tell my boyfriend that I just want to be famous enough to be on Dancing with the Star. So. <laughs> If you're calling it, I will take it. <laughs> yes. And, and why do people say that that's when you get to dance with the stars, that means that your career is over? I know. I don't think so. It's like on the way down. But I'm like, I don't know. I love the show. I'm like, I think that it could be a way into, you know, breaking into a career or the way it, up a career, up the ladder, I guess. <laughs> I agree. I agree with you. So I'm just like... I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are awesome. Thank you it was so much. So great talking to you.